what I'm hoping to be able to do is kind of take you guys through the, the process that I went through a little bit in beginning to design this uh, orchard system. I've settled on this sort of orchard polyculture design where what we're going to do is we're going to plant uh, fruit trees with plenty of light and plenty of space. Actually, we're going to use really wide spacings. And we're going to rely on the ground covers to generate the biomass and fix the atmospheric carbon and nitrogen, biomass being mostly atmospheric carbon. As this project was beginning, it was to be done on a section of land to the south of us. And initially, as we were doing, I was doing soil survey work, it's all really spodosols. It's all really Mayaka and Immokalee fine sands. And those are our dry ones. You know, there's a small section by the south road that's a little bit drier. Put some nut trees there later on. But to really do an orchard system, it would have required some pretty dramatic earthworks. It would have required either that we did it the way Florida citrus is planted on spodosols, which involves a network of ditching for drainage so that that way during the wet times of year, um, you don't become completely inundated and lose your trees. The worst thing that can happen is you have a dry year and your roots grow down all the way to the spodic layer, which I'm about to show you guys. And then the wet season comes and, and you go underwater and all that new root growth drowns effectively. You lose your trees. And the worst thing is you don't even know you lost them until the next dry time comes. So basically what you end up with is you end up with way too much tree tops with way too little roots. And as soon as the water recedes the next time, that's it, you lose your trees. And the last thing I wanted to do was put in this uh, polycultured orchard and uh, have a wet year and, and lose the whole thing. So, you know, that's one of the real challenges facing the project right from the get-go is how, how, are we gonna, how are we gonna pull this off with regard, with regard to drainage? So, bringing you down into this cross section now so you can see what it is I was talking about with uh, these sort of Florida soils. This is a pretty good example of a very typical spodosol in Florida. And what you've got is sort of this weak, weak topsoil. And then underneath that, we have what's called an alluvial horizon. And that's the horizon that's washed out. And when you get down to here, you can see where our seasonally high water table is. And that's why when this stuff washes through the sand, it deposits here, because this is typically where the water level is in the soil. And uh, this deposit is not really rapidly permeable at all. In fact, it's incredibly slowly permeable. See what that is? That's just a really thick organic deposit. I wish we had that material to work with up here, right? But unfortunately, it's down here, which means this is periodically actually more often than not completely flooded with water. And it goes anaerobic all the time. And so this, two feet of this material will only hold two inches of water. One inch of water per foot to work with. And uh, that means if you get a two inch rain, which happens all the time here, you are flooded to the top. And so the only way to address this is either to ditch on a regular interval and make sure that your trees are in a spot that's drained to ditching or tile by installing drain tiles like that throughout the profile that can drop the water table or even you can set the water table there and you can use it to sub irrigate. On the sites we were looking at before, we had enough distance between the surface of the ground and the top of this layer. We had just over 36 inches and we'd have been okay, this is thinner because this is a, a real Mayaka profile. But interestingly enough, on a, on a large, large portion of this farm, under this, which is about two feet thick, is another section of alluvial horizon. And at about seven, eight feet, there's a sheet of clay. It's about 20 feet thick. And it runs all the way from uh, a wet area to the west to the lake on the east side, that, that clay subsoil lies and so what happens is the layer beneath this is filled with water almost year-round 
And so you don't have much to work with. I mean, there's no possibility of managing this as some sort of hard pan that you're gonna break with roots or you're gonna do some really radical tillage operation and break it up with a subsoiler. Nothing's gonna happen. This is a spodosol and it will be a spodosol and that's just what it is. So I got a phone call and it was kind of a happy phone call. We had just finished this design, right? And we got a phone call. Um, there's another piece. And I think that there's some well-drained spots on it. And, you know, of course, didn't know whether to laugh or cry because we just finished this design, right? But said, okay, great. You know, I'll start with the soil surveys again and we'll start all over. What's over there is a lot more of this and this, if present, which is only present in one of the soils, is much, much, much deeper. So we have about a 48 inch high, high seasonal water table on, the, on these, these locations. And some are even deeper. Where we're gonna put the nut trees is even deeper than that. And that's a real, a real huge benefit on a project like this, is being able to have drainage at all. Of course, it's out of the frying pan into the fire, right? Because now we've got excessively well-drained sand. So you can imagine what our organic matter contents look like in those soils and about how well they, they hold water about as well as this is, except it doesn't get stopped here. It just runs straight down. So we start to talk about the next, the next requirement in a project like this. The first is drainage, whether that be mechanically installed by way of ditching or by way of tile. And uh, the next is uh, moisture supply. And so we'll talk a little bit about irrigation as we go across and take a look at these fields where we're going to be doing this.